Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence and this is my channel about the transition from gas-powered cars to electric cars from the perspective of a first-time EV owner. In my last video, Charging Public versus Private Charging for Your Electric Car, I had briefly shown my Flow X5 charging station that I have here at my house. Well, with winter now upon us, I had a second charger installed. I chose a different model. It might not be as sexy as this one, but it really suited the needs that we had for my wife's car. So to know why I chose that and also to find out what happened because somebody hit and ran on my 2019 Kia Niro EV, stick around and I'll let you know in 10 seconds. As I just mentioned, somebody did hit my car and ran. And that happened yesterday while I was having lunch. My car was parked in the parking lot. I'll show you some footage of what it looks like very shortly. But essentially I was having lunch and somebody said, hey, somebody just hit that car that's out there and had just come in from uh, outside. Now, fortunately, this person, which is a good Samaritan, was able to capture a picture of the back of the car with the license plate. I filled out a police report and he acted as a witness filling out his portion and that person gets a $1,000 fine for having done a hit and run that could have been probably resolved for a few hundred dollars. So that's not what this video is about. This video is actually about charging stations and why I chose two different ones. One that in my opinion is really good looking and another one that's utilitarian looking. Um, basically, when I had my 2019 Kia Niro EV arrive, I opted for the Flow X5. Now the Flow X5 is a smart charger, which is web connected via a power line ethernet adapter and gives me access to a web page that shows me my electricity use and I can schedule it and turn it off and stuff like that. Uh, but what the really most convenient thing is for me is since I no longer have a gas that I can deduct because my car is electric, when I charge off of my Flow X5, I receive an email when the charge is done. I receive an email of how much electricity that I've used down to the thousandth of a kilowatt hour. This allows me to just punch it into a spreadsheet with the average cost per kilowatt hour based on my yearly electricity bill and stick it into my expenses. So that is one main reason, but the other reason that I chose the Flow X5 is the fact that Flow is a Quebec-based company that makes a really robust device designed for our winters and our weather. It is weatherproof, waterproof, dustproof, and all that other good stuff, but they also opted to use some cable that is designed for uh, pliability, even though it is really cold. Like right now, it's minus 11 degrees. I'm freezing, by the way, uh, but the cable is still pliable and it'll be good down to minus 40. So I don't have any worries that this winter when I wanna plug in my car, that I'll have an issue with the cable being rigid or brittle or possibly breaking because it isn't designed for our really cold winters. Now, with that being said, and that's why I chose this device, and I also think it looks really nice compared to some of the charges that are out there on the market. And I think it's by far the best looking and that includes the Tesla level too. I think this one is much nicer and metal very resistant. This one, also metal, um, not so sexy. <laughs> it's more of a utilitarian looking device, but it is designed by a Quebec company as well that has the same mentality. Essentially, the company is called La Station Verte, and they have the mentality of building something that's gonna last longer than your car. And the charge pistol is one of the main differences that I noticed. This thing is built like a tank. It's, it's quite amazing. And I thought the flow pistol was nice, and it is. And this is the original pistol. They don't actually use this one anymore. They have a shinier, cheaper looking one that they use because they say this one's discontinued. What I find a little uh, disappointing is that instead of them going to a supplier like this, they opted for the cheaper pistol that, uh, in my opinion, I think when it's cold, if it drops the way it looks, I'd be afraid of it breaking. I have no proof. This is all speculation, but it doesn't inspire confidence. When I look at this, this thing is rubberized. It's like metal. It's like crazy robust. So definitely uh, a really nice uh, detail on the Station Vert charger. Fortunately, I've got the original pistol for the flow, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, the other thing is they also use very high quality cable that this one is actually more pliable than the one from flow even though it's still minus 11 degrees um, and i know that this won't be an issue because it's also designed for minus 40 weather 
The nice thing is they've also given me a little charge pistol cover so that even if it does get iced up or snowy, this thing will not be frozen. I'll still be able to release it from the station or from the car. Now, in the case of the Station Vert charger, it also includes a cable mount directly on the device. But the main reason that I chose this, even though it's not a smart charger that's web connected, it's a smart charger that offers multiple features. It has multiple users that can be set up with pin codes. So this way, even though it's not a smart charger, I don't have to turn off the breaker if I leave for a week on vacation and worry about somebody uh, plugging in and charging on it if I didn't turn off the breaker. If you don't have the pin, you don't get in. Type in the wrong pin, it locks you out for a set amount of time. And I can change that if I want. There are also some really interesting features on the screen of the device uh, when you've charged based on the number of kilowatt hours you've used and a value that you've given per kilowatt hour as an admin on this thing, it'll tell you how much your charging session cost. So even if you didn't have a smart charger that gives you reports, if you have this, you can still tell how much electricity that you've used uh, although it's not a printed report. There are also many other features, uh, but this won't be a deep dive into all of the features of the Station Velt charger, but I wanted to let you know that this device is a, from my very limited experience with it, uh, seems to be a super high quality charging station with some really interesting features. And I invite you to have a look at their website. I'll put a link to that in the description below and have a look at what they have to offer. It is a newer company that is based here in Quebec. The owner's a very techie kind of guy who seems to have the mentality of build it so that it lasts longer than the car. And that's something that really inspired me to purchase this particular device. One of the things that people don't talk about when they discuss charging an electric car is what happens when you're in a situation like mine. I live in a house that doesn't have a garage, my charging stations are on the outside, and I have two electric cars, one with this giant door to charge the car that's exposed, and you live in a province like Quebec or in a state like New York where winter can be brutal. Now it can get down to minus 30 and there can be three, four feet of snow, not all in one shot, but it's still something that does happen. If you charge overnight, what happens if there's an ice storm and the next day you're unable to close this door? Not very convenient. Now, La Station Verte with their charging station has this nice little pistol cover, but the problem is that it's completely useless when the car is plugged in and then there's an ice storm or a snowstorm and this entire thing gets jam packed with snow and ice. Now, fortunately, there are a couple companies that have come up with solutions to solve this situation. One company is called Echodome. It's a company that's uh, in Quebec, Alex Industries, that have an industrial type material that they use to make other products. And because he's got an electric car and had this problem originally, he invented his first product for his car and then made them for a whole bunch of other cars. Now, the very particular thing about the Kia Soul EV, the 2019 and previous models, is this huge door that opens and has this entire area that needs to be protected. Well, fortunately, he came up with an interesting idea. You've got this giant tent with little flaps on the side to protect it from getting snow on the sides. There are magnets that hold it to the hood. Now it's really important that you make sure that there's no dust or dirt under the magnet and that your hood isn't covered in crud and that you don't start sliding this thing around because it will scratch the hood if you do that. But if you take the five seconds to make sure it's clean, put it on the hood gently like I just did and then secure the cover with the Velcro, then you're done. The car is now completely protected from snow and ice He's got these protective flaps on the sides and there's no way anything can get inside. The next day, it's just a question of undoing the Velcro, peeling up the little uh, magnets, storing it somewhere convenient, either in your car or in the house, and you're able to disconnect, close your ports, and head off without issue. Now, what about the Kia Niro EV and other models of cars? In the case of the Niro, as well as the Hyundai Kona, and I'm pretty solid in my guess about the 2020 Kia Soul EV, is the hood is made of aluminum. So magnets don't stick to this like they do on the previous generation of Kia Soul. 
Now, fortunately, there are two companies that have come up with a solution to solve this. You've got Echodome, which is the same company that makes the previous generation Kia Soul cover, and you've got another company based in Quebec called Macapuche, or My Cover. It's a pretty bad translation, but pretty much gives you the idea. It's uh, macapuche.com. And both companies take the Nero in a similar fashion, but with a twist in terms of design. The first thing you need to do is when you exit your car, pull the latch on the hood to pop it open. Let me get that done. So with the hood popped open without being completely unlatched, you don't have to lift it up. You just have to have this popped open slightly. Plug in the charger. And then if you take this first product from the company Mechapish, it's got some Velcro on it. This is the top portion. And all you have to do is slide it underneath the hood to the edge of the light here, and then close the hood. Once you've done that, bring the door close to the cable, put the Velcro together on the top and the bottom of the cable, and you now have a cover that prevents ice and snow from building up in the charge port. Simple, efficient, and easy to carry around. The one concern that I do have with this product for this design is that the tip is putting the pressure on the end of the charging door. Now the charging door on the Kia Niro EV as well as the 2020 Kia Soul and the Hyundai Kona Electric is pretty flimsy plastic and I don't know how that'll handle heavier snow that'll accumulate on this because it will put the pressure on the door. Although it does have this sort of an angle downwards because of the way it's designed and the way it does rest on the door, I'm not too sure and I'll only know when I start to use it further on in the winter when we have more snow accumulation. Now the Echodome product works in a similar fashion. Let me show you how that works. Echodome that makes the solution for the 2019 Kia Soul EV has a similar solution for the Kia Nero EV with a similar idea as the Macapish. Essentially, it's got a flap that goes underneath the hood so that it keeps it in place. The difference comes in terms of the main body design that's actually a cube with a Velcro opening for the pistol. To install the Echodome, you start by opening the Velcro that's on the back portion of it, stick the pistol through, plug in the car, and then make sure that the dome covers the charge door. Line it up with the hood. And then close the hood down. And then wrap the Velcro around the cable. And you're done. So it is a little more difficult to install than the Mechapish product, but it has the added benefit of having this structure that actually touches the sides of the car and holds it up and it's not pressing down on the charge port door. Now, like I said on the other portion of this video, the charge port door itself is a little bit flimsy and with the accumulation of snow and ice and the added weight on either product, I think this one will support the weight in a better fashion. So it ends up being a personal choice. Do you want something that's a little bit easier to install or do you want something that's a little more self-supportive? I think both solutions are fine and I don't really have a preference of one or the other. If it's not really gonna be snowing that much and it's just a question of ice accumulation because of a little bit of freezing rain, I'd probably use the Mechapish product for the simple fact that I can slide it under, quick Velcro job and it's done. If it's going to snow and there's going to be accumulation and then maybe some ice, then I will definitely use the Echodome way before I'll use the Mechapish product. And I have the advantage of having both. So what do you choose is up to you. I think they're both fantastic products. They're both made by companies that are in the province of Quebec that know what winter is about and they both put quality products out on the market. So I invite you to go check out their websites. I'll put links to them down below and then you can choose for yourself. When choosing a home charging station or an EVSE, it's going to be very important that you do it based on your environment and your requirements. If you've got a garage, unlike me, then you won't need to pick something that's designed for extreme weather, whether it's cold or hot because that is the other thing to decide on. If you live in an environment that gets extremely hot, 
Verify the tolerances of the device you're looking at to make sure that it'll survive outside in that extreme heat. Just like with cold, it's very important that the device meets your needs. The other thing that you have to consider is even if you have a garage and it is an environment where you have cold winters, if you decide you want to charge your car outside the garage by passing the cable underneath the door, then you need to make sure that the cable will remain flexible even though it's super cold outside. So in that particular case, you're going to probably have to spend a little bit more money to get that device that suits your needs. The other thing to consider is the smart portion of it. The smart or web connected portion that was important for me because of my business expense requirement isn't necessarily something that applies to you. You can save quite a bit of money because the two units that I chose are not the cheapest on the market, most likely one of the more expensive units on the market for both units. There are tons of manufacturers in the US, in Canada and in Europe that offer devices that are both smart and not smart so that you can just plug it in and let your car charge based off of that device. Another thing that's going to be very important to decide on is how much amperage you want. The more amperage there is, the faster your car will charge. Both devices that I've chosen are 30 amp devices. They both have their own dedicated circuits, so are able to charge at the maximum capacity of each device. You could hook up two smart chargers that do load balancing. The Flow X5 is an example that if I only had one electrical circuit, I could have balanced it on one circuit and each car could have charged at lower rates. Now in my case, I was able to have two circuits installed to allow both cars to charge at their maximum charging rate based on the EVSEs that I have installed. So it really depends on what your requirements are. Do some homework, verify what's available in your market and choose accordingly. Now the other portion of my video was based on the covers or the charge port protection that's available. Even if you've got a garage and you live in a winter environment, you might still require one of those devices. Let's say you go on a road trip and you're staying at a friend's house or you're going to a hotel or something to that effect. If it snows and you're plugged in, you're going to have the same problem that I have whenever I charge outside during the winter. Your charge port is going to get jam packed full of snow. So in that case, you might want to look at getting something that you can leave in the trunk from either Alex Industries for the Echodome or Mechapush.com for the Mechapush product. And that way you'll have protection for when you're on a road trip. In either case, you choose based on your needs, and I hope that this video was useful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comment section below. And I wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody once again, because my subscriber count is going up in a, uh, a really quick way. And I was astounded because this video was almost one month in the making because I had to travel for business. And I am, as usual, late in posting. With regards to the t-shirts, the winners will get their t-shirts shortly. I'm just having them produced. And thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. When choosing a home charging station or an EVSE, it's going to be important that you choose based on the require... Really? Now? You choose now? Lay down. Push toi. Push. Binu. Binu. Push toi. Push toi. Don't worry. Push toi.